Welcome back to Roadmap, Auto Trader UK's product and tech podcasts. And today we've got a behind the scenes episode. So what the madness happens on the other side. And we're going to be chatting to the geniuses, as they call themselves, of video production. We've got, first up we've got Tim, uh, Tim Platt, video production lead. Hello, Timothy. How do you do that? Uh, then we've got t- Tom, not Tim, got Tom Wakefield. Tom, 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 Tom Tim. Tom Whitefield, video producer. Hey, Tom. Hey, Pete. Hey. And last but not least, we've got Jordan Greenhouse, also known as Jordan Greenhalgh for people that don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, and Jord is a video production apprentice. Hello, Jordan. Not for much longer. Not for much longer. Oh, oh yeah. congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Uh, yeah, I've got a, I did your green man, did I? So that's yes, a blown by. Um, anyway, right. So I had no idea what video production was uh, when Tom grabbed me in the office and said, hey, I work in video production, dude. Did I say it like that? Uh, <laughs> it was probably a bit cool. It's like, yo, dude. Probably. <laughs> yo, dude. With a, like a slanty beanie on, like, hey. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I work in video production. Do you want to come do some stuff? And I'm like, what is this video production? I knew Tim ran around with the camera now and again, but... Yeah, so what is it? What is video production, and especially Art Trader? I'm going to go to you first, Tim, as the um, elder statesman in the team. Uh, video production at Art Trader. Well, put it, it personally, I think it's the best job at Art Trader. Yeah, it seems a right good laugh. It is. It is. Yeah, um, yeah we're getting involved with so much stuff. But I think, like, from my perspective, it's born from a lot of different things. So it started off quite small. There wasn't a video production team. Yeah. Um, and then I just started doing a bit. It grew legs. Yeah, I think it was when we used to work together in CXO, wasn't it? That you were, you I'd see you now and again with yeah. some camera stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I'd, I'd never picked up a camera. I was always interested in the media side. Yeah. But, like, uh, yeah, it was it was just I was given a bit of a... chucked a bit of an opportunity and ran with it. Yeah, and then it just grew legs from there, and then it became this this kind of like thing thing. Yeah, this yeah. team, and uh, so but like over over time, it's developed into kind of like serving our trade facing business to business content, yeah. uh, things like roadmap for AT Life and our employee brand. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting too mad. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as well as the fun stuff that we do internally, which is which is great. Yeah. Um, but that's why it's the best job at all. Trader, we get involved with so many different things. Hold on a sec. Yo, what's that? Seventy four point eight percent people not subscribed. You joking? Hold on. Right, listen, we're gonna get taken off air. If you're liking these podcasts, remember to like and subscribe because we need to get these numbers up. Otherwise, it's time for the. Yeah, and and is it? I mean, like, I'm. I'm probably not, not being facetious here, but like, I always see you three in this room, all the little things we do behind the camera. But is it just about being behind the camera or is the other things that you do? Yeah, no. Um, yeah, no, there's a lot that goes into uh, the preparation before we actually even come to the point of bringing the cameras and putting up the lights. You know, we, I think, I think we're given certainly in our role a great opportunity to to plan and to really strategize for quite high high levels of production um you know recently we we just uh we did we in the summer we did a shoot in the in, in trafford studio for the product update um and that was like that was like a good couple months planning and you know sourcing the right people to that like we're going to be on on the video and just really kind of going into the the kind of the nuts and bolts of what we need to do to make this the, the absolute best it can be so there's a there's a lot of work that we do before we even we even come here whether it's storyboarding uh script writing down to even just like risk assessments and it, so there's kind of and that's why we have a we have a great team that can all kind of lean on and and, yeah. and get it all sorted yeah, and so like Jod, like obviously you're you is Jod the newest? Are you the newest recruit? No, actually. Oh, no, we got another. Yeah, keep the current list, Joe. Right. So how many's in the team now then? Uh, there's six. 
Well, if you include guys, six, yeah. Yeah, I do a mother and I, I think, is it, is it five? It's five, five in video. I can't even count oh. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it but. Because I'm being filmed, I can't count anymore. It's, <laughs> it's super weird. Can we just clarify, like, this is the first time we are all kind of this side of the camera. So yeah, yeah. Like, I was going to say. This is what it feels <laughs> like. <laughs> it's awkward, isn't it? <laughs> it's a little strange. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. But, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so it, and said, so I think, Jordan, I was going to ask you a question, actually, because we've been doing some internal stuff for some of the networks. So what's this? I hadn't realised how much work went into post-production as well. So sure. I get there because we've done a little bit of storyboard and a little bit of prep with Tim. But it's the whole, I was amazed at how much afterwards. I just thought it's like, boom, video done, post it on YouTube, jobs are good. In. Oh, we wish. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it tends to be a lot of a longer pro process and obviously we have quite a lot of projects on at one time so there's a lot of uh, kind of stakeholder management or finding out what's the quickest priority um that goes around that but i think the process of it is getting easier and easier i mean with you're doing a podcast on ai and obviously that's like a major thing in video production at the moment as well so we're taking uh, advantage of that and kind of speeding up the process where we can with different tools yeah yeah there is there is um a lot more thought now. Uh, I mean, I've been doing this since, well, it's probably about eight years now. Back then, it was a bit more of a needs must. There, there wasn't really um, an understanding at the time of just how much video content could achieve because a lot of the con, a lot of, if we did do something of a, of a video content, it was always, at the time, if I remember correctly, outsourced to external, agen uh, external agencies. Um, while when as this team has grown and the expertise that have been brought into it there's much more specialists and it isn't just the people who sit behind the camera hit and record there's a lot more thought to the craft and the lasting impression that we want yeah people watching the video to leave with yeah rather than just oh we need to do a video about x hit record and it's done there's there's much more thought. You've got the design aspect yeah. behind it, and sure. and and bringing those people on board. How how do we? And and I think that has made such a massive difference to the quality of the output. Yeah. Um. So it it, it definitely isn't just the four walls of this team. There's lots of other inputs from designers, creative, other creative people. So. Yeah. But then, and it's funny because it has grown lows, and I know Tim, like we used to work together years and years ago. But how did you two, Jordan, Tom, get into it? I mean, like, I, I met Jordan on his like, like the Green Man induction, which is an AT thing, and, it, and when he said, "I come, yeah, I'm an apprentice," I'm like, "Oh, cool, what anyway?" Video production, I'm like, "Whoa!" <laughs> and then you started talking about some stuff, so I'm interested because yeah. you both come in externally. Like Tim was already born and bred here, <laughs> but Tim and me, but uh, was been here for like 55 years. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Start with you, Tom. How did you get into it and arrive here? Wow. So, yeah. I'll 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 try and I'll try and keep it brief. But um, plenty of time. Okay. Great. <laughs> um. So I, I, as as soon as I could, I I was making videos. Really. Um. I remember I had an iPhone 3GS. That one of the first iPhones that you could actually download apps to edit your uh, the videos you capture. And I was just yeah. The, the the when I first I remember the first ever video I made it was a it was like a stupid little bouncy ball video trying to trick shot them into bins and stuff but I just I just like the penny dropped when I realized I could take clips of footage splice them together and create uh, essentially a bit of bit of content that other people could watch and enjoy and then from then on I was just really hooked and was had a youtube channel and um during you know throughout the whole time i was at school i was just making constant videos slight side note i remember actually the only time i ever got into trouble at school was when i did like a day in the life of of myself and i brought my phone into school and was like recording myself in school and uh and I was like, this is me in math. Yeah, I was like, well, I was, there was, there was like, I remember my mates coming out of class and I was like, so how boring was that lesson? And then, yeah, and then posted it, posted it on YouTube. And then yeah. every, everyone in school was watching the video and then the teachers got wind of it. And then they were like, this is a big no no from like, you know, all the kids in care and all this sort of thing. And yeah, I got into a lot of trouble. 
<laughs> and that was when I was in like year nine. But then I think, you know, that kind of that, but I was just obsessed with making videos. And then my mum, I remember saying, you know, you're going to go to college and you can actually study this and, and, you know, and go on to make a living from making videos. I was like, what? I could actually, I, I could actually get paid to do this. I was like, yeah. So that kind of just set me on a, on a course. And then I went to university and studied film for three years. And that was unbelievable because I met so many like-minded people and learned so much from them. And it was just a great three-year crash course. If you're into film, it was, you know, we were watching films every single week, writing about them, going out, making them. And, um, and yeah, just, it was just heaven to be honest. And, uh, graduated in 2020 and into a pandemic uh which you know if you're making films you have to go out to locations film people it was it was a real challenging time and i had my own freelance um kind of business at that at that point and uh i remember i had like three shoots booked and they all got cancelled because of because of covid restrictions and all my money dried up i had to go get a job at domino's delivering pizzas and just making videos just on the side for free um, and I thought I just need a bit more security and I also miss working in a team. Um, so I, I just, yeah, saw this job popped up online and I went, yeah, wow. let's go for it. And then here we are today, yeah. three years later, almost. Yeah. That's insane. What about yourself, John? I remember you talked a little bit about it. Yeah. What was your journey into video production and soon to be a hero professional rather than a apprentice? Soon. Um, yeah. So my journey was... Not too dissimilar, but I kind of found a passion for film. Well, I loved films, but passion for filmmaking later in life is after I went to university uh, and I was studying maths. And then I found out... Yeah, the, uh, channel. Yeah, yeah. Found out as soon as the maths it's wasn't easy. It's, it's, it's not really uh, interesting anymore. Um, so, yeah, I dropped out. Not to the uh, satisfaction of my parents, but I kind of pursued filmmaking and videography on the side whilst working full-time at a cinema which is quite cool yeah. three films yeah awesome um yeah so i i worked freelance uh, i started my own little production company started off doing videos for like the thai restaurant around the corner and all sorts of like small places and then actually started working with like some veterinary franchises and stuff which is quite good but um this was all kind of during covid and it was still in that time where like you could be busy for one month and then really quiet for the next yeah. two. And it's not really enough that you could depend on it. Um, and I think the, the key thing for me was I noticed that there was room for a lot of self-development and I wanted to do it full time. At the end of the day, I was still working full time um, at a cinema and I wanted to work in video full time. Like how else would you kind of grow and gain more experience than doing it day to day? So, uh, yeah, I looked out for opportunities, saw the LinkedIn advert for Autotrader and applied. Yeah, you know, badness. So from just a little uh, Timbo to the to the team. But you've you've all mentioned film actually, so I'm gonna go totally off topic now. But like <clears throat> you've said you like inspired like especially yourself when talking about I loved films then come into it. So is there a particular when you watch films or particular like producers, directors or the areas you go, it's brilliant. I love that. But not that that's what I want to film, but the ones where you totally appreciate the craft. I mean I've got like anything Wes Anderson, like, you know what I mean? That Grant Budapest Hotel, I could watch it about 50 times. It's just insane with the cartoon into then like film. But have you got particular favorite films, directors, anything on that video production side that could inspire other people to go, hey, I like video too. Looking at you, Tim, first. Looking at you. <laughs> I, I, I do follow certain directors. I'm, I'm very much of the all, like, you know, I'm a big Steven Spielberg fan. Right. Um, got tattoos on my arm of. Steven Spielberg films that I loved. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's have a look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get it out. No. I thought you could say I've got a tattoo of Steven Spielberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love them pop culture type films, you know, Back to the Future and all that. Oh, yeah. I suppose for me, it's <clears throat> it's what films, so the, there's films in moments in time that are just, you, you just know it's like, it'll be on, Hundred movies to watch posters that you can scratch out that yeah. are good games like Jurassic Park is one of them. You can watch that; it doesn't really it's it's timeless, isn't it? A uh, lot of the rings. Me and you did a, a yeah for a marathon of the extended edition. Yeah, the, recently me and Tim went um to the cinema and 
I think it was from what, like half half ten in the morning till midnight, all three extended versions back to back. <laughs> and we honestly, yeah, I thought it would be harder, but it was honestly it flew by, didn't it? <laughs> oh, it, it, yeah. So yeah, that 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 that's another set of films. But then it's just like more what films stand for. Like I, I love Disney, but the early Disney, yeah, where it's that innovation and looking ahead and. Evolving the 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 craft of making films, yeah. animation, yeah, I, lo- I love stuff like that. Anything innovative, yeah. Um, what about yourself then, Tom? We've talked Lord of the Rings. Is there any any sure? Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I love Lord of the Rings. I think that will always be the pinnacle for me. But um, you secretly want to be a Hobbit or something? I just 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 I want to live in Rivendell or <laughs> you know gallop on horses in Rohan. I think there's nothing cooler, but. Um, yeah, I, I suppose w- when I went to university, that's when I s- really started to broaden my mind in terms of um, techniques and and how film can evoke a response from an audience. I just found that fascinating how a mixture of audio, yeah. camera, uh, and story can really just you know have visceral responses. Because cinema's been, you know, cinema goes back a long time, and it and it's a, and it's an escape for so many people. That's why I don't think it can, you know, with the likes of streaming services, you still see people flock into the cinemas because it's because you you are so dialed in and you and you, you've got no distractions and film. That's what film can do, and it can take you to a place that, you know, for me is just just I, I just love it. It's just, um, but in terms of like films, um, I mean, I look to uh, when I saw Parasite for the first time uh, came out in 2019 and kind of swept the Oscars, this Korean film. Um, and I genuinely went into the cinema kind of not knowing anything about it and was just blown away from the the pure brilliance. It, for me, it is the perfect film because it is just the perfect synergy of storytelling, cinematography, audio design and acting. It was just, it, it was almost like, and and I went back and watched the other direct films. It's almost how the like, I I compare it to how the Swiss make watches, just when everything is just so mechanically yeah. in harmony. It's just that's that's the comparison I would make with this film. But yeah, yeah just when when it, when all the elements combine, it's just yeah, it just brings me a lot of a lot of satisfaction and joy. So you get what I mean? I mean, like I've got a memory from when I was like I don't know, I must have been about maybe eighteen. I went down to meet my mate in London. And we went to just a camera. I remember, is it the Prince of Wales cinema just off Leicester Square? We watched mm. Apocalypse Now and Full Metal Jacket, and there was hardly anybody in the cinema. And it just me, there's about maybe 10 people, but actually, you know, with the sound and everything, and I'd yeah. not seen them before, like pinned in your seat yeah. for like that'll do it. And he's like, You come out, I think he was only about eight o'clock in the evening. We come out, he's still like, It was summer, and I'm like, What's just happened? I know. It's insane. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Insane. Yeah. But what about yourself, Jod? Obviously, working in a cinema, you probably got to see loads. Oh, I did, yeah. Oh, I could go all day with different directors, and uh, I love cinematography as well. So yeah, yeah. DOPs, shout out to them. Um, I think in recent times, maybe I'm going to butcher his name, Denny Villeneuve, did uh, June Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah. Prisoners. Yeah. yeah. He's probably my favorite director at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think sometimes it's, when you go in blind like you did with Parasite, that's like the best experience. And one of the recent ones for them also did well. The Oscars was uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. That was a level. Yeah, you watched that, didn't you, Tim? Yeah. I mean, it's so original. I mean, I, that film's amazing because I remember it came out the same time as Doctor Strange, the multiverse of madness film. And they were both multiverse films, but one had a hundred million pound budget and one had just a, a fraction of that. And... It was just so original. The editing was just so on point. It just almost felt like you were, you were listening to a song. It was just the rhythm of the film. Just it, the pacing was just perfect. And yeah. and yeah, you can just really, I think anyone can appreciate film. You don't have to have gone and study film. That's the beauty of it as well. It's so subjective. People can take what they want from it. Yeah. So I'm gonna come back into our trade now because I mean I could talk. <laughs> yeah, we could just talk. Yeah. Forever. So. Actually, like equipment wise, so this is something me and Tom have talked about. Like we were talking about the mics when we were like starting to create roadmap, like these mics or these headphones or this particular like mixer kit you got. So have you got like in your day to day job any particular like items of kit or things within the all trader building that you absolutely love? Things that you talk to your, you know, your video mates about, not like a VHS camera on your 
shoulder with a big tape in it. Like, what is your favourite equipment that you go, can't can't live without that? Or ones that you want to go, this is what we've got. It's brilliant. <laughs> For me, it's a weird one. I'm, uh, like, I think we, we all work with autonomy on the team. I'll give a bit of context. So I, I don't see myself as necessarily, well, I'm top-down management. Yeah. But to be crude about it, and this is going to sound cheesy, my toolkit is the team. No. It might have... Well, no, I'll give you me. It's, it, there, there might have been a time where, or, you know, because I've, I've, my, my background to this has always been, I love telling stories. Uh, you know, I've come from a performance, used to tread the boards at Amdram and went to drama school. So I'm very much from that angle of the performance and the, yeah. the storytelling. I had to learn the, the video production side and wasn't always great quality, I'll be honest, either resource or knowledge. But now the team where is at where it is and the expertise that we've got, my favourite toolkit is the team because each one of them will bring a, a different thing and a different spin on a video or a different quality. And that that's allowing us to create the content that we're doing at the moment. So... To sound a bit cheesy, no, that makes sense. I mean, you know, a bit corny. That that is, yeah. I remember you more my own. chatting on. We're doing a couple of shoots outside. Yeah, yeah. A different like one. Well, we use this lens on. Yeah. I think from this angle, it was just fascinating watching the conversation. Yeah, and we have good creative debates as well. Yeah, we do. Yeah, and and we challenge each other. And I think that's that's a good culture to have. Really, like no, no one's afraid of going. I don't like that idea, you know, and. And we, we talk it through. Yeah. It's, um, so you two can't say people now because Tim's covered that. We come to him. No. Get in there. I wasn't going to be. Get in more, there. Well, I was just going to say a light. <laughs> no, um, I think when I came to the team, um, it was just um, JT, we should also mention, who isn't here right now, but um, is a core member of our team. Uh, and when I first came in, the... It, it was just after COVID, so the, the equipment wasn't quite up to the, what it is today. Um, so we've kind of slowly added to our list. To, and then the content has just, you know, elevated from from kind of the equipment we've been adding. Um, but yeah, I, I I love the the light that's lighting us right now. Because you could just use that in so many different... It feels so warm under it and all that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you could just use it in so many different ways and... It just, um, you can just get so many different looks and effects that you want. And, yeah. you know, equipment's great. I mean, I love it. We all geek out over equipment. You know, we wouldn't be in our job if we didn't. But it's like, it's just the story is yeah. the, the most important thing. And all this equipment is doing is just adding to the story. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably say the light to answer your question. Awesome. And what about yourself, George? Oh, it's stolen my light now. So uh, <laughs> I'll have to think of something new. I think... Um, if we're thinking about equipment that we've got that other people might be jealous of, uh, we've recently got the motorized slider, which you probably see in action. Who's the, that's the six member of the team. Yeah. The autopilot. So we've got a robot yeah. that's uh, just sliding. It's, it's not. It's it not something super cool, isn't it? I don't really look at it ever, but it's like uh, when you just catch it, you're like, hey, there it's, it goes. Yeah. I feel like I'm on BBC Sport. That's it. Yeah, it definitely have to be that or the cameras we use. I think even in like the just over a year I've been here, the equipment we use has just gone skyrocketed. Yeah. Uh, the production quality is yeah. just crazy now. And Tim can talk. I mean, that's I think that's testament to the work we've been putting out because, you know, we've the business has put a lot of faith in, in our team and has given us a budget to go and, you know, spend twenty five grand on on all these cameras and and lenses and lights to because obviously they see value in in the in the content that we put out. Roadmap being a, an example. Yeah. <laughs> It beats my uh, GoPro 9. I think last time we were out, Tim, didn't you? You lost the GoPro, didn't you? I didn't lose it, Pete. It, it, Got it, lost. Rob lost it. <laughs> you were good. It was very, oh, he, he was good. Yeah. I didn't know. It was, it was, it was all one. Yeah. I think it was like GoPro, GoPro 4 or something. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, that's a little, you couldn't get the footage from it either. Somewhere on the Hulk and Moors. Maybe one day we'll find it. <laughs> Someone's going to edit this footage. You know, what I mean? yeah. anyone was going to un uncover this GoPro. Was, I think it was brilliant footage. Yeah. I mean, I do love my GoPro. I mean, like, I, I love it. They're great. Yeah. yeah. They're really good. Yeah. But then it sort of leads me into them, like, because we've all, all had our own little interactions with stuff, like little stories where it's been really funny. Uh, 
and I've, I've chuckled even when we were doing one of the internal ones uh me and jordan recently and it just uh it jordan setting up and he was he had me in stitches because he's like you know we're balancing everything on but have you got particular like, moments where you think back over last year of like your favorite moments of being a video production video producer or a trader like or any of the funny outtakes type stories whether it be like me and tom i think running across uh <laughs> and he, i'm like the lights are going the lights are coming on green lights go green <laughs> just keep going just keep going. And then you're like, oh, 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 just about within the health and safety brief. Just about. <laughs> so that's probably, we might need to edit that out. No, we're not going to edit that. So is there any favourite favourites? It oh, doesn't have to be this year. That's whenever. Oh, I've got, I've got a few. I've been very privileged, actually, going to Rolls-Royce, filming the to-be-released Phantom 8. Whoa. And, and the thing is, I look back at it, not in disappointment, but like, oh, I always look back, oh, if I could have had the team that I had now to film that, because yeah. it really was just me with, with this crappy camera that we had at the time, you know, like, uh, so there was that funny moments. It, it was more circumstance. I've, I've, I've turned up a f- few places and not charged batteries, and then I took a lot of mistakes. Or I've not hit record. That's a bad one. That actually uh, that happens. Is, that is, uh, you know, I'm yeah. sure there's lots of videographers watching. Yeah, that's it. And anyway, you have to say, like, that was good, but we need to do that take again. Exactly. You got <laughs> it. I got it. You could be a video producer. <laughs> it's, always, <laughs> you could be. it's always their fault. You know? <laughs> and then the, the, I think there were, uh, to, to tell a quick story, I think there were circumstances around the shoot was I was going filming our then CEO, Trevor, down in London, and the train from Manchester was at seven. And I woke up, overslept at quarter to seven. Ooh. And uh, anyone who oversleeps, it's happened to you, he'll probably tell that story in a minute. Ah, oh, sad it wouldn't come up. It's, 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 <laughs> it's that heart and mouth thing. The only thing that saved me was the, the trains were cancelled because of an incident or whatever, and I never made it down there anyway. So a bit of a saving grace. And I don't think Trevor made it up at the time. So, <laughs> But yeah, that's... Yeah. When you're filming the CEO, you don't want to let that person down, do you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we, I mean, I've had loads of crazy experiences outside of work, working on short films and stuff. Um, but the, I would say one of the, one of the, like the pinch me moments I had recently was we went down to film at the Houses of Parliament. Um, and nice. yeah, yeah. Cause we were, uh, Auto Trader was, uh, hosting, um, ethnicity pay gap. And yeah, so we went down and there were a few MPs, but we got like special passes to go through into these private rooms. And, you know, there was like a big event out on like on the, on the banks of the Thames. And it was, yeah, that was a, you know, like, oh, look where we are now. You know, I just started making YouTube videos of bouncy balls and and here we are. So yeah, that was a good, that was definitely a highlight. Yeah. Looking at you, Jard. Oh, fun moments. Uh. Even yesterday, we did some filming yesterday. Uh, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. That was a fun morning. We've never used like backdrops before. They've got revealed this fabric backdrop, and it's not cut to size, so it's a bit of a problem-solving session for a couple hours. Um, but no, I think most shoots we're on, it's it's always fun, isn't it? It's never a dull day in our team. Yeah. Yeah. That's mega. That's absolutely mega. So, right, we're going to close in a minute, because I know we're starting to run out of time, and we got another shoot to do and <laughs> you know it's a crazy day today so if then you could um if you could give any advice for anybody wanting to get into video production because i know like i know it sounds cheesy but my kids then they do gopro bids of my biking and they think they're there like you know you've got like 10 views uh i mean we've only got 276 subscribers so far I'm going to keep plugging that. 276. Yeah, actually, can, if you're watching this right now, please can you subscribe yeah. because, we, you know, we put a lot of effort into it. Yeah, I mean, look. It helps the channel out a lot. Yeah. And George now, because of this, is now going to be a professional. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, like, do it for George. That's our new thing. Yeah. Do it for George. But, yeah, so anyone so, wants so to... Get... Just give him campaign. <laughs> just subscribe. Do it for <laughs> But, yeah, on a serious note, if you wanted to get into video production, because, obviously... I know, like, we're, we're not a massive team, but if there's something you could say, these are hints and tips. If you're really passionate about video, things to look out for. Yeah, I, I don't mind saying. Yeah. Um, 
I, I honestly, my advice to anyone getting into it would just be just start making content. I mean, it's it's anyone can make a film. You, you we all have smartphones, you know, that are you know really high quality. So there's there's literally no excuse. Like if you're really passionate about filmmaking and 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 storytelling in general, it, you will just want to make videos and film. So that's probably the best way to just just start making. Um, you know, in your spare time, it as I said, it's, it's it's super accessible. There's there's so much content out there on YouTube. You know, you don't need to go to film school. You you can YouTube can be your film school. So yeah. tap into all those resources and and yeah, just be generally really open and 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 connect with people that are that are out there making a living from it. Because um, I feel like there is a really good culture within the community of of video makers and filmmakers that want to help people and give them experience so yeah anything to add from you Jared? uh yeah i agree obviously experience is top but also building a network like you said uh if you haven't gone to film school or anything i made a, a, a bit of a priority to reach out to people in the area production companies yeah uh work with them I made short films of all sorts of people and now i've got quite a good external network without having ever really done any courses or anything beforehand cool so, yeah Anything from you, Timbe? Um, I would just say be fearless, be curious, try stuff. Yeah. You know, you look at all the, the the directors and filmmakers that you that that you admire and aspire to be. They all did their first one. You know, whether it's Tom doing that video for YouTube saying how bad his class was, or the ball. You, you, you know, the 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 what the stuff that uh, Jordan did with. We've all done our first one, haven't we? And it's all come from a sense of curiosity and just for the passion and yeah. never never lose that. Always be your own filmmaker and yeah. get out there and do it. Do your first one. That's and it. that's that's sounds get the ball rolling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sounds brilliant. I mean, I love working with you guys. I mean, it's like not no, no it's it is so good fun. Yeah. So I presume you all accessible on LinkedIn if anyone is interested in Absolutely. this. Absolutely. You're brilliant. So, well, that's that's our time up. I'm going to have to get on with like doing another one, but maybe not as a <laughs> not as off piece topic. So, thanks to yeah, yeah. Tom, Jord, thanks to Ben because we really want to get Jord. Keep Jord here. Yeah. Yeah. Please subscribe, subscribe for Jord. Subscribe. Otherwise, he's leaving. <laughs> we've got, he's, we've got, leaving. he's got two months. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, he's gone. But yeah, please like and subscribe on YouTube. Hit the notification button so you never miss an episode. And follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And don't worry, Jordan... Yeah, he's not leaving. That was a joke. But please subscribe. Anyway, catch you soon. See you later.